just because someone has left an abusive relationship doesn't mean it's over. In fact, very often they haven't really escaped anything. So welcome to this, I believe, fourth um, video in this uh, video series on all the things you need to know and understand in order to actually support um, someone in your life who's experienced domestic violence or narcissistic abuse without victim blaming. And so this is a really big one that I've had a lot of survivors ask me to share about. And that is that even though they worked really hard to maybe escape this relationship, it's not over. Just because they left doesn't mean that their abusive partner um, kind of just gives up and, and is going to move on. Actually, they still want to maintain power and control over that partner. And so they're going to do this in a different way because they don't have the same access. And so I want you to, first of all, just remember that the year after um, someone has left an abusive relationship is actually the most dangerous time for the victim and the family and the children. That is when the highest number of homicides or murder suicides happen. Um, they can happen other times as well, but that time is the most dangerous. And so what is this actually called after they've left, it is called post-separation abuse. So what does that look like? It might look like um, stalking and harassment. It may be harassment at work. It may be um, driving by their home back and forth. It may be using technology to stalk them um, you know, with different tech resources um, and safety resources that way. But it also can be this like insidious form. It's called domestic violence by proxy, which is when they use other people to continue to abuse. So they may try and use you to continue to abuse them. And what it's called in um, kind of this world of domestic violence and narcissistic abuse is flying monkeys. So if you think to, um, the Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch of the West, had her creepy flying monkeys flying around doing her bidding. You want to make sure that is not you. So I'm going to touch on this a little bit more in a minute because it comes into play really heavily. So they will likely use some sort of smear campaign. So they might do this on social media. They are going to come to you. They are going to come to other family members and friends and try to um, tell whatever story, whatever narrative they want you to know or think about so that you will side with the abusive partner and not the victim. And so that is how you will start to become a flying monkey. They may use, um, you know, people at church or people at work or joint friends to get information about their victim. They may say things like, gosh, you know what? We broke up. I'm heartbroken, but I'm also really worried about her. And so could you just check in on her? Um, she's been, you know, going downhill mentally and I'm just really worried. And so they're insinuating that the victim is in fact crazy. And after experiencing trauma of an abusive relationship, they may present to you as crazy, which then is like, oh yeah, he's correct. Or the abusive partner, it's not always a he, um, is correct. And she is unstable. And so then you become a flying monkey because you are just kind of going with what this partner says, you may be bringing information back to them. You may be victim blaming without even knowing it. And so that is one way of domestic violence by proxy. They will use whatever and whoever they can to continue to hold power over this person, which means they'll use the children if they share children. And so post-separation abuse is the most, um, 
hellish experience. A lot of my um, clients will say it's a different kind of hell when they share children, because guess what? It is really, really, really hard to go no contact with someone if you share children with them. So they may use your, their children to further the abuse um, by counter parenting. So an example is you may have raised your family uh, vegetarian since your children were infants. And all of a sudden your partner, your ex-partner is introducing meat into their diet or bedtime is really important. And then all of a sudden it's not, or things like that. So anything that the victim parent wants for their child, the partner will do the opposite. They may actually threaten the child or threaten you with the children um, as well. So filing a lot of CPS, child protection reports um, that are false. Um, there's just a lot of things that they will do to use those children against the target or victim parent. The most horrific and long-term way they are going to continue to abuse their ex-partner if they share children is through the family court system. The family court system is not educated and fairly biased in these cases. That's a whole nother story. I've got a many, many podcast episodes on this, um, which I'll link in the description below. But they will file constant motions. They will do all the things they can in court to smear them, to take the children, to financially just ruin them, and to just cause complete disruption of their lives. Will they lose their job because they keep going to court over and over? Maybe. Will they pay child support when they're supposed to and how much? No. Nope, they're not going to do any of these things. So if you're a support person and you're like, oh my God, like, gosh, can't you guys just get over it and get along for the sake of the children? That is all the victim wants is to just be done. Leave me alone. Stop filing frivolous motions. Stop breaking court orders. Stop doing all of these things like right, play by the rules. And guess what? We can all, you know, I don't know if live happily ever after is the right term, but that is not what happens. So if you are like, wow, this is such a high conflict divorce, 99 times out of a hundred, it is domestic violence and narcissistic abuse. So that is what survivors in your life may want you to know. So if, um, you want to share this video with someone because you, um, you're a survivor and you want others to understand what you're going through, please share it. If you want to be notified of upcoming videos in this video series, subscribe um, with the button below. And if you want more resources to stay connected to me, all the links are in the description below as well. So be uh, looking for our next video in this video series. And I didn't even say this, but I'm Sybil Cummins. I created Rising Beyond Power and Control, the Rising Beyond Community, and the Rising Beyond Podcast. And I thank you for watching.